Welcome to Bath, Biz, and Foam. My name is Robin French-Smith. Today is What the F*** Wednesday, where we ask the age-old question of what the actual f***. So, over the next couple weeks, I'm going to be doing some bath bombs that use alternative methods. Okay, shall we say alternative? Alternative methods for making a bath bomb. And I want, I want to test them. I want to see, do, do they work? But I realized as I was going through it that like we need a baseline. You know, like we need a baseline to know like why does an ingredient work or not work? What does this ingredient do? Why does a recipe work or not work? And so I figured that we could go over what's actually in a bath bomb, what you kind of need and what you don't need, what's kind of extra. And um, I was going to show you uh, Amanda's basic bath bomb recipe, which is free on our website. And I'll include a link for it at the bottom. But uh, yeah, let's get started. We'll break down all these ingredients. We'll, like It'll be superficial, but we'll do it. Okay. We got this. So what is a bath bomb? In its most basic form, a bath bomb is going to be citric acid and baking soda. When you combine citric acid and baking soda, doesn't matter how much you combine it, doesn't matter if you actually form it into a bath bomb or not, when they're combined and water is introduced, they're gonna fizz. So at their most basic form, bath bombs only need baking soda and citric acid to fizz. Now you also need something called a binder, which can be witch hazel, isopropyl alcohol, or my favorite, water. Kind of depends on where you live for what binder you would choose, but you definitely do need a binder. The next thing that you're gonna want is a hardener. Now, some people call these fillers. I think that that's kind of a, a misnomer. Like, it makes it sound like you don't really need them when in fact you do. So, I like to call them hardeners. These are typically kaolin clay, cornstarch, or cream of tartar. Next, you're gonna want an essential oil or fragrance oil so that your bath bomb can smell good. A actual oil or a carrier oil like avocado oil, cocoa butter, or coconut oil. An emulsifier, like polysorbate 80, soy, lecithin, I can't say that word, or something like that. A colorant that's FDA approved, like um, an aluminum lake, a mica, or a water-soluble dye. As an additional optional, <laughs> as an additional optional ingredient, you can include a foaming agent, which would be a surfactant, or a milk powder like those two that I showed you. So now you can combine these ingredients in all kinds of different ways and all different mixes. And you can personalize bath bombs based on your needs, your area, where you live, what your demographic is. So there's really no hard set rule as to what you have to have in it, but there's definitely things that I think make a better recipe versus not. So today we're gonna go over Amanda's basic bath bomb recipe. Now what's cool about this recipe is not only do we have it in cups, we also have it in grams. So if you're just starting out and you only have, um, you only have measuring spoons, you can use this recipe. So you don't have to go buy a scale right away, but I do encourage you to buy a scale. Um, one of the things that I did is I put my bowl on a scale and as I was weighing um, or measuring each volumetric ingredient, I was also weighing it. And there are variances between what my weight showed and what the suggested weight is. Particularly, I noticed this a lot with cow and clay, but there were a couple other ingredients where I also noticed this. And as a rule, I mean, a couple grams here and there probably won't make a difference when you're doing a really small batch like this, but you can imagine over time, if you got batches larger and larger, this could like really multiply and um, cause a lot of variation in your batch, which I think is one of the key ingredients to success is to continually um, to, to weigh your ingredients. The other thing is that like, it's really hard to do a portion of a tablespoon. So for example, if you had an eighth of a teaspoon and you wanted to quadruple that or double it or half it, like it's really hard to do 1 16th of a teaspoon or 1 32nd of a teaspoon, you know? So that's one of those things like it's really hard to break that down at some point or to scale it up. Whereas when you're using grams, that's very easy to do. So, okay, I talked through all of that, but I will include a link to the recipe in the description so you guys can go find it um, on our website. 
Um, and I, I encourage you to go to the website, not just here watching this, um, because Amanda does a really good job explaining all the steps. There's lots of pictures that can help you go through each step at a time. Um, I used just a tiny pinch of blue one lake and I'm mixing it in. So, and I'm using water as a binder. One of the really good things about this recipe is that it said what binder Amanda uses, but she didn't say like you have to use this. So some of the recipes I've been trying, like for example, the purple bath bombs, it said put a tablespoon of water in there. Well, I mean, what if water just isn't the best binder for me? So when you give people options, so one of the things I want you to look for when you're looking for recipes are recipes that give you leeway or give you options that say like, you can use cornstarch or you can use tapioca starch. You can use, um, you can use a liquid oil or you know you can switch to any other light liquid oil that you want. That way that you know then like okay this person's actually tested this with other ingredients and can you know kind of verify that this isn't just a one trick pony this recipe could be modified and work in other different ways. So one of the really good things about this recipe is it includes hardeners and it actually includes a little bit of each hardener um, cream of tartar, cornstarch, and cowl and clay. I actually like all three in my recipe. I feel like each one brings something to the table. Cream of tartar is a great hardening agent. I mean, it really hardens bath bombs. It is super, super expensive. Um, I feel like cornstarch makes the water feel really silky. It can also aid in floating if that's like something that you're really looking for with bath bombs. It can help slow fizz down a little bit as well. I feel like cowl and clay makes the water feel really silky and nice, so it's an ingredient I love to include, but it can make bath bombs sink, so that's just also something to keep in mind. Another thing is that this recipe has an emulsifying agent, polysorbate 80. There are different emulsifiers out there, um, which I will be testing over the next couple weeks as well. But polysorbate 80 is a really common emulsifying agent, and what that basically means is that any water uh, any water. Yes, there is gonna be water in your bathtub, breaking news. Now, any oil that's in your bath bomb is going to be able to mix into the water that's in your bathtub. And that means that the oil won't be floating on the top. Um, it means that your tub won't be slippery and there's certain bath bomb colors like this lake that I used, which is oil soluble. It really needs an emulsifier to make sure that it doesn't get really messy. So um, an emulsifier is a really important thing. Now this recipe does not include a surfactant, which is fine. A lot of people, you know, don't know when they first start making bath bombs, whether or not they want to have a surfactant or a foaming agent. Like I said, you can use a surfactant or you can use a foaming agent like milk powder. Um, but this bath bomb, you'll notice when we put it in the water, it does actually have a little bit of foam. And here's why. Polysorbate 80 as an emulsifier also can act as a mild surfactant. So surfactants and emulsifiers kind of do the same thing. They make the surface tension of the water looser, okay? So that it's easier for to sustain bubbles in the water. So surfactants and emulsifiers both do that. The other thing I really like about this recipe is that um, Amanda says in the recipe that if you have a plastic mold that this is a great way for beginners to start and I 1000% agree with that. I think that the easiest mold for beginners to start off with are hard plastic molds like that cloud mold that I have down there. The ball molds that I'm using right now are super difficult to work with um, especially if you don't know I mean, I, I know how to use them, but so many recipes I find say things like twist the two ball, <laughs> twist the two ball molds or like leave the bath bomb in the ball mold overnight, which is like, that's just not, I mean, that's just not scalable. Like you can't ever scale that up then, um, which I just don't like that. So that's definitely something that I appreciated about this recipe is that it says, she didn't even talk about going to ball molds. You know, she just is like, hey, if you're just starting out and you're using a basic recipe like this, then, you know, consider putting them in a plastic mold. And the, the cloud mold that I have, obviously I purchased that specifically to be a bath ball mold, but you can use like all kinds of things. You can use sand things, sand play, those play things like, like kids play with and sand, whatever those are called. Um, you can use something like that. Um, there's just lots of different options for you. 
The sprinkles that I'm using in this recipe are actually, actually, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the sprinkles in this recipe are actually cosmetic um, approved sprinkles or cosmetic, cosmetic grade sprinkles. Is that, is that a term? They are cosmetic sprinkles. All the ingredients in those sprinkles, those are handmade sprinkles and all the ingredients in them are fine to use in bath bombs. There's no sugar in them, so you're not adding any sugar into your bathtub or into your bath. Um, and they are also made to melt when they are in the water. So, you know, there might be a few sprinkles left at the end, but most of them will be melted. So to me, that's just a, and don't get me wrong, I've used plenty of candy sprinkles, especially when I was first starting out and I didn't know, number one, that I shouldn't. And um, and I didn't obviously have a recipe for cosmetic sprinkles because that's kind of a new recipe that we came out with. So, you know, I don't think that there's anything wrong with using food sprinkles. It's just if you have a better option. For me, if I have a better option, I'm going to use it. Oh, hey, let's test it. Yeah, so to see what I'm talking about, we have some fizzing going on, but we also have some foaming. Even without a surfactant, we, there's no SLSA or milk powder in this. Just that presence of the polysorbate 80 also makes it to where we get some foaming action. So that's kind of nice. It's just kind of like an additional bonus that you get when you use um, an emulsifier like this. Bath on time. So it's been 24 hours and I'm back in the workroom to test out these bath bombs. Let's give it a whack in here, see how it sounds, if it's hard or not. Yeah, so they got nice and hard even over 24 hours and even with the hurricane. So that's, I mean, that's great. Uh, I'm definitely gonna say that's part of having those three different hardeners in there. Like I said, they all do, they all bring something different to the table. Um, now in her recipe, she does say to leave the bath bombs in the mold for about 10 minutes and then take them out and I totally forgot. Like I left it in the mold and walked away. But still, it comes out of the mold really easily. It looks great, it's nice and hard. I mean, I think that anybody would be really happy with that. So much nicer than an essential oil, okay? Just trying to put that out there. For those of you who are wondering. I almost dropped it. I've almost dropped it a couple times. <laughs> we need to get it into the bathtub as soon as possible, okay? <laughs> my glasses are falling off my nose. Help, help, help. Okay, there's nothing wrong with essential oils. I'm sorry that I said that. I'm not trying to knock essential oils. It's just like, I'm really tired. I was really tired of using essential oils in the bath bombs I was testing, and I was ready for some fragrance oils, so. I used a skin safe fragrance oil. There are plenty of them out there that are safe for your skin and when you use them correctly at the correct usage rate, they are perfectly fine. Now I did all this setup just for this one shot, like all that setup. I just wanted to include that for you guys. Want to test the bath bomb? <laughs> Sorry. I just wanted to, you know, key on them my struggle my dra my daily struggle all right i put the bath bomb in look how pretty it is it's fizzing really nicely it's a fast fizzer because it doesn't you know if you include a surfactant one of the things that they can help with is slowing down the fizz you can add too much and it can make it too slow but not only do they help with foaming they also help to slow down the fizz you do see some foam on the top of the water, which is really nice. And that is probably partly because of the polysorbate 80 that we have in the recipe. But overall, it's just a really good bath bomb um, and it's a really good place to start. So I hope that if you are looking into bath bombs, you know, that you have fun with these videos that I'm making, but I also wanted to give like a really good baseline for like, you know, we, we have to have like, here. here's a, a bar. So like we can tell if bath bombs are coming below or over it. And especially when we're looking at different recipes, like how is, you know, how are they coming in? Are they, are they coming above, behind? Is this a better performing? And now a lot, a lot of this is gonna be personal preference. I like a bath bomb that takes a long time to fizz. 
I like a lot of cowl and clay in my bath bombs, and I personally don't care if they float. So those are kind of things that I value, and other people are gonna value different things with their bath bombs. Some people love a bath bomb that fizzes really fast like this. Some people only wanna use essential oils. Um, so there's just different things that people are gonna be looking for when they're making their bath bomb recipe. And that's one of the reasons we, you know, at the beginning of this, I showed you all those different ingredients. So you have lots of options. You have lots of things that you can explore. There's no reason why when you see a recipe, you have to feel like you have to follow it exa exactly. Um, I'm gonna bring the ring light over the bathtub right now so that you can see the reflection of the beautiful ring light, which may not, it just hits differently after the week I had cleaning the bathtub as many times as I did, okay? Um, which is fine, it's fine. But the, the videos I've made of the different test bombs, like, oh my God, it's just really nice to have a bath bomb that has an emulsifier in it so that we don't see oil just floating on top of the bathtub. Um, that means that when I stick my hand in the bathtub, it's not going to be shiny. Y'all remember that? No, that's not gonna happen. I love, I love that that doesn't happen. What the f That was so easy. Strange as bitch. All right, and we're pulling the stopper on that. There is some stains on the stopper, those kind of brownish yellow stains, but that's not from this bath bomb, neither is that yellow stain. That's from something else that you'll get to see next week or the week after in a couple weeks i'll show you guys what that is but it's not from this i'll tell you that <laughs> you'll know it when you see it trust me thank you so much for watching this youtube video if you liked it um be a doll and hit that subscribe button like this video share it with your friends because sharing is caring you can also come and join our Facebook group, Bath, Fizz, and Foam, Bath, Bomb, and Bubble Bar Support Group. We are a helpful community of makers, and we would love to see you there. And as always, happy making!